go. Good morning around the Diamond family. It is another episode. We got a fully jam-packed free agency episode. You've got me, Grand Slam Sam, and again, I am joined by my awesome co-host, Baseball Bill. Bill, how are you doing on this fine Saturday morning? Okay, it's Saturday morning. It's early. What else am I going to do? I'm going to talk baseball with my good friend, Sam, and so much to talk about this week. We could do like a two-hour segment, but we won't bore you guys to death with that, but I'm excited. No, no, we won't. Um, winter meetings are done. Yes. Big transactions have been made. Um, some some great, some upsetting personally to me, but ultimately, um, <laughs> it was a great week for signings for a lot of great players. So let's jump right into it. Let's not waste any time. Uh, let's go with some of these big ones on the move. So the biggest free agent off the market is off the market. The biggest free agent on the market is now off the market. Mm -hmm. Aaron Judge has made his decision. It is, he is going home. He's going back to the Yankees where he has played it, since he was in the farm system. He's going to finish his legacy there. As Bill has said the last couple of weeks, trying to rub it in my face, he's going to get his monument in Monument Park. Going to get the big old C right there on the chest. He's in pinstripes. Bill, what are your thoughts on last signing? Uh, not surprising. Um, according to one unnamed source, he was a giant for about seven and a half minutes. Um, <laughs> not surprising. I will say this, though. Um, I respect the ball player. Uh, when we when we get into a few things, I will talk about that. I respect the ball player. Good for you, Aaron. Getting your money. Um, but now what happens is he's not used to that big contract. So, Sammy, when those dog days of summer happen, let's say he has a lights out 2023 season like he had in 2022. When mm -hmm. those dog days of summer come, maybe in 2024, where he goes five for 47. Yeah. Um, where he goes five for 47, uh, you know, with six or with 10 strikeouts and one home run, people are going to be booing him because they're going to say every strikeout he got paid, blah, blah, blah. Leave that for right. you guys. Let that be. Unless you're the guy in the arena, in the batter's box, let it go. But congratulations, Aaron Judge, making your choice. Thank you for turning down San Diego's offer. That makes me happy, happy, happy. Yeah, so as as a Giants fan who is in who the Giants were in heavy talks with Aaron, um, not arson judge, Aaron Judge, um, <laughs> I, I was upset by it personally for a little bit. However, as a baseball fan, I look at this as – he stayed with the team for his legacy. He had even came out and said, he, you know, to, the money to him is great, but it's about keeping his legacy intact. He's able to hold on to that legacy. He's able to remain a Yankee for life. He's going to sign, he's going to finish his career out with the Yankees. This will probably be his last contract. I don't honestly see an extension coming after it. It's going to take him till he's 40, and he'll be able to right off into the sunset in pinstripes, um, you know, and I agree with you completely. If he had taken the San Diego contract, it would have set, he would have set the precedent that it was all about the money. It was all about the money if he had taken San Diego's contract. Mm -hmm. The fact That's that cool. he took the contract that matched the Giants from the Yankees shows he was really doing it just to want to stay in stripes. And to me, as a Giants fan, while I'm upset about it, I can respect that as a play. I can respect the, it. The, um, only com the only comment I'm going to make, Sam, on that, on what you said, you don't see an extension going on. Um, the only way an extension happens is if he's close to a mile marker, i.e., I think he's got like 266 home runs. So if he averages over the next – you know, three years, 30 home runs or whatever, he wants to get to that 600 marker or whatever, then you maybe a, year. One or two year extension. Okay. But otherwise, yeah, I can, so I agree with that. I agree with that. I think you're right. It's similar in the Verlander situation, getting the two year deal with the Mets. Speaking of that as the next uh, free agent on this board, um, two years, $86.6 million for Verlander. You know what excites me about this one, Sam? 
is the Mets are paying three players this year a combined total of $87 million. Only three players. They're playing... $87 million? That is insane. For three players, they're paying Max Scherzer, they're paying Justin Verlander, and of course they got to pay Bobby Bonilla. So, (laughs) three players, $87 million. Um, Well, I'm happy for Verlander for getting this contract. Um, I... Truly think it was overpay. Of course. Um, of course. I think it was, I think the Mets could have realistically offered him a, a $70 million contract for two years. And I think that would have been a very reasonable offer. Um, I, I think the 86.6, it, it, one is just an odd number to me. Um, but I think it's overpay. I mean, Verlander is towards the end of his career. He's really just trying to hit a mile marker as we made a connection with Aaron Judge. If he's trying, you know, so I think it was just a little too much. Um, going down this list, though, there were some other big ones that the I think the biggest one that shocked me was Xander to the Padres for mm-hmm. 280 for 11 years. Um um, you know, looking at those two shortstops, Trey Turner and Xander, with equal years, but Xander getting that twenty million less and going out to San Diego, you know, who do you think out of these two teams won in the in the shortstop bat in the shortstop battle? Option Option C, none of the above. Eleven years is <laughs> too much, first of all, especially for Trey Turner, who bases everything on speed. Right, he's your average shortstop defensively he bases everything on speed he's going to be 30 years old when the season starts so you're going to tell me when in seven years that he's going to be still in 50 60 bases probably not when he's 37 years old but let's talk about Brady for a second you know what this tells me Sam? this tells me that the Padres brass and now mind you I haven't talked to them they didn't call me during the winter meetings I told them Get your winter I was waiting done. for their. I was waiting call for me. people's calls. They know. Yeah. They know I'm there. I said, "Call me after the winter means we'll talk. We'll do lunch." So, Bogey, what this tells me is they are looking to offload Fernando Tatis's contract if Fernando Tatis acts up one more time. And the quote a line from Top Gun, right? If you screw up just this much, you'll be flying a cargo plane full of. Anyways, you guys know, but. What it tells me, Sam, is they are are working. They're telling Fernando Tatis, if you screw up one more time, we're going to offload your contract to somebody, and we don't care who it is. And so that's what that now, tells Now, does me. he have a trade now? Does I don't he think he has a no trade, no trade clause in his contract? No. While we're talking has... through this, I'm going to do some quick old research. But just to bring up a little bit of quick points on Xander, you know, Xander has, if you look at the numbers over the last, and I'm also going to exclude 2020 from these numbers, because I think you and I can both attest, including 2020 in these averages right now is an unfair advantage due to the fact that they, these guys didn't play a full season. It was only 60 games. The statistical averages are going to be in, are going to be skewing these numbers. So I'm going to push 2020 aside. I will agree with you on one condition. You okay. agree that it is a real world series. I'll uh-huh. agree that it's uh-huh. Uh-huh. a quarter of a world series. I'll agree uh-huh. that's a quarter of a world series because they played yeah. approximately a quarter of a season. Anyway, but if you take Xander Bogart's numbers over the last oh, awesome, you know, let's just let's just take from twenty nineteen to 2022 excluding 2020 in 2019 Xander Bogart was pitching or uh, was hit had a 309 batting average he hit 33 home runs with what was it, 117 RBIs in 2022 he had 73 RBIs while he had a 307 batting average he only had 15 home runs so his home run number has declined by half, which is, mm-hmm. to me is an is an incredible number. He's already been in the league for net, what next year will be his tenth season, and now 
a guy in a similar situation to Trey Turner, who's 30 years old, is now going to be playing until he's 41 mm-hmm. with the Padres. Mm-hmm. On if, a no if trade he stays with the Padres. clause contract. On a no if trade stay- clause contract. Yeah, but he can, if he's not happy, he can accept a trade. So Right, and that, and that's where it's going to go to. Now, when we pull up Tatis, as he is a point in this conversation due to Xander now, he, so Fernando Tatis has a $340 million contract for 14 years. I'm not seeing anything about a trade clause in here. His contract takes him till he's 35. Mm-hmm. Or yep. so I mean, you know, right now if they're if they are, yeah, he has a full no trade clause through twenty twenty eight. So what I think they're going to look at is they would keep him. They would realistically need to keep him, and I think it would be the best benefit for them to keep him until twenty twenty eight. Because in 2029 through 2024, he has a 10 team no trade clause. So 10, he has 10 teams that he will make eligible to be traded to, should San Diego not want to keep him. Um, you know, I, I think it, if they're able to get his no trade clause waived before 2024, I agree with you. I think there's no question in my mind he's going to say, they're going to say, you screw up, you're gone. If they can't get that trade, no trade clause waived, they are going to be locked into a lot of money for a long time that I don't know how they're going to get around it. It's simple. It, it's very simple, Sammy. You know how it is? It's very simple. He screws up again. He's a bad teammate. He's not the stellar person in the community. You know what happens? Hey, boys, here's the bench. Pick some splinters. It's really, really simple. And you don't give them as many at-bats, you know, and you turn them into the villain easily in San Diego where he's getting booed at his own home stadium. Simple. Then then he walks, right? Yeah. Then he says, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's easy to do. That's not a big deal. And But when you look at some of these numbers, the 340 million, 340 million, when that was signed, we were all thinking, "Oh, that's insane." Now you look at these numbers; it's not insane. Where no, you and you're right. It's I know. I'm I'm my I'm having technical yeah. difficulties over here. Things keep going back and forth. But you're right. You make him the villain. You're gonna push him out. Yeah. Um. Easy you to also do. make him the villain. You all, however, if you also make him the villain, he can become the villain back. Because remember, he could. He could put you in a situation where the 10 teams that he would want to put get traded to don't want him. And then what are you going to do? You, yeah. You're going to put yourself – the, the San Diego needs to play this right to trade him and not damage the money that they just unloaded on him, which again right. goes back to me saying you should never give a 22-year-old $340 million ever. Yeah. Ever. True. True. So, so uh, looking at yep. some of these other contracts, though, you know, let's take these last three contracts at the bottom real quick, and then we'll move on to some quick old, to some good rumors. Brandon Nemo re signing with the Mets for eight years, $162 million. Overpaid, but congratulations, Brandon. Good job in getting your money. Yes. Um, you know, looking at his numbers, he has been on a drastic decline. And he's been an uh, average hitter, but not worth $162 million. Not anywhere close, and especially not for eight years. The Mitch Hanniger one, obviously being a giant, and I am happy by the signing, but it's an interesting one. For the three years or the two years with the third-year option and it being a player option, do you think the Giants won out on this deal, or do you think Mitch won out on this deal? Giants did. You're getting a you're getting a decent uh, outfielder with pop for 43. So and and it gives Mitch a chance to reset, get out of Seattle. Yeah, and coming so, back to the Bay where he grew up, born and raised. Here we go. Here we go. How that born hey, and raised I'll thing always, for Aaron Judge? 
<laughs> legacy, legacy, legacy. Again, I will bypass wanting to come home if your leg if you want your legacy to be intact. There we go. Um, um and then Wilson Contreras replacing Yachty behind the behind the bag. Uh, a lot of uh, Cubs fan, a lot of Cardinals fans, I hear, aren't happy with this because they're so used to cheering against him. I think Cardinal fans. <laughs> um, I mean, I that's fine. Uh, I think the Cardinals won on this because they're looking for a catcher to replace a catcher that's a first ballot Hall of Famer, and they finally mm-hmm. got it. And so, yeah, you and know. I agree. I agree. I think Contreras is a great signing for this for this club. I think he. But I think he's a perfect replacement for Yadier Molina, um, who I agree is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, you know, I I don't – I think this was definitely a win for the Cardinals. No question. So before no question. we move on from that, let's – talk. no, no, no. Before we move on from that, let's talk about how this affects baseball. Yes. Okay? Yes. And so this affects baseball. It To me, this affects baseball in a very negative way. So if you haven't, those of you listening, if you haven't read Sarah's article yet about fandom versus the business of baseball in the locker room, please read it. Make a comment if you want. But she takes it from a different perspective. See, I'll take it from the business side of the perspective, but she took it from the fan perspective. And she brought up, you know, a family of four going to a game. With these big contracts out, and then don't forget next year, you have a Juan Soto contract that you got to deal with. You got a Shohei Otani contract that you got to deal with. You've got a Julio Rios contract that you got to deal with. You got a Walker yep. Buehler contract that you got to deal with, and a dozen other people. Okay, so now a family of four going to a game. Let's just assume that we're going to go down to Philly, right? Take New York out of it for a second. Your cheapest seats might be fifty bucks now. So if you're a family of four, it's going to be two hundred bucks to get in the stadium. Okay, if you take public transit, let's not include parking in that. Yeah, I was going to say exactly. But if if you have to pay for parking, you know you got unload that. Then in addition, two fifty right there because it's about fifty dollars to park at the stadium. Yeah, so you're two fifty just to get in the ballpark. Okay, now the kids are going to want the hot dogs and the peanuts and the the so everything Ah, now is up, and so you're talking about a family of four spending four hundred dollars on going to a game when we're sitting there economically we're looking at this and going gee you know the gas uh, prices are up whatever am i going to go to one game this year or am i going to go to 10 games and it ends up being we're going to go to to one game so the business of baseball is going to outdo the fandom of baseball and you may see attendance go down um that's the I, I don't personally, I think these guys are great. They're getting paid for what they want to do. Um, congratulations on getting paid, guys. I love it. Um, there is no price tag to me. No price tag for losing your freedom. Aaron Judge cannot walk into a restaurant in New York without people wanting to mob him. Um, so $360 million, maybe that's just the tip of the iceberg. Maybe it should be a billion. What's What's your freedom worth? But the business of baseball is going to outdo the fandom of baseball. Because people aren't going to be able to afford to go. A hundred percent. I completely, I completely agree with you. You know, you've seen a drastic increase in price um, across the board uh, in every stadium in the last in the last ten years, and you've always seen an increase. There's always been a slight increase, but you're right. In the last five years, as these mega million dollar con, these multi million dollar, hundred million dollar contracts have started to become a bigger precedent um you're seeing that ticket prices are drastically skyrocketing you're seeing um food prices skyrocketing parking price park uh, parking prices skyrocketing apparel pricing skyrocketing so you got to put all of these factors into in, into play you know where you used to see fans going out and buying maybe two three jerseys a season they may be buying a jersey or maybe not even a jersey now maybe they're buying t-shirts with their players names on the back because they can't afford a jersey they're not buying two three hats anymore they're maybe buying one or they're hoping they get a free giveaway you know you're going to see more and more people looking to go to 
uh, go to the games where they're going to get a free giveaway for something they can have long term rather than going to just the game to watch the game. So I think while these are good for the players, from a fan's perspective, it does impact a lot of yeah. how we are able to enjoy the game. And it's going to – I can honestly see an increase in – I could see an increase in viewership on MLB TV and watching these games from home and a decrease of live in-person viewing – because of these types of contracts. So I agree with you. I think while it's good for the players who are now going to be generationally set for life and their families will be set for life, you're eventually going to start exiling your fan bases from being able to attend games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, and when, it's a shame. Look at, look at the Trey Turner contract. That's just under $30 million a year. So it's about $27 million a year, if I did my math right there, $28 million. Um, when you think about that, that's over $2 million a month. After taxes, it's well over a million bucks a month. How do you spend a million dollars a month? I don't yeah, get let's it. just so it's twenty. So he's annually making twenty seven point two point two million annually mm -hmm. pre tax. As a baseball player, let's just go off of the general assumption, and you know, if you agree with me, we'll take this number. Let's just go on the assumption that he's going to be at a forty percent tax bracket due to the number of taxes he's going to have to pay, being that he has to pay for all the states he's going to have to play in over the next calendar year. Right. So, would you say would you say between say thirty five percent tax bracket right around there? Well, yeah, we'll call it thirty five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's just take that twenty seven point two time or twenty seven two zero 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 times that by point three five minus twenty seven two zero 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 zero. He's gonna be making seventeen million. 17 17 point six million dollars annually mm -hmm. after taxes which is about a million and a half dollars a month which so, I mean his condos paid for now his you know he's taken care of he's he's set um but I agree you know <laughs> I remember watching a thing where Willie Mays had said I got a ten thousand dollar contract for 10 years and I thought I, this was the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that's the type of contract players you sign. Barry Bonds, when he was when he signed with the Giants back in 1993, signed a $43 million contract for six years. That was like the highest priced contract of the time. Now you're seeing guys get like eight years, $162 million, and they can't even touch certain numbers. And you're like, how are you justifying their net worth? It's just not justified. As it Josh is. Reddick, as Josh Reddick said on Twitter after Cody Bellinger signed, I guess I should have tried to hit 200 with 150 strikeouts so I could make uh, <laughs> 20 million a year. That's it. So let's talk about some rumor stuff. You know, we we talk about the biggest signings since the winter meetings, um, and there's a lot still to talk about with that. Um, you know, we, as Bill said at the beginning, we could talk for two hours about the winter meetings because there was just so much to digest. Um, but some big things that are still in the rumor mill, there are still a lot of big names out there. A lot of big names out there. So, you know, Bill, take me through what you're seeing on these rumor mills and what some of, and what your thoughts are on some of these. I'm curious. Carlos, Ren Carlos Rendon's seven years is too long for a pitcher. Um, at his age, you don't, do a seven-year deal you might do a four-year deal heavy laden with incentives um and options uh carlos correa as of right now what i'm hearing is new york or san francisco dansby swanson is going to have a ball because he's going to watch carlos correa sign he's already watched trey turner sign he's already watched bogart sign and he's going to have a ball with it. His contract will be something that we look at and go, uh, how did, you know, not numbers wise, but you look at it and it's just going to be an insane contract. Um, he's yep. on the open market. Uh, San Francisco is 
uh, from what I understand, just from what I read, San Francisco is is high on Correa, low on Swanson. The Dodgers are not even going to pursue Correa anymore, apparently, and go with Swanson. So you have a Dodger fan and a, a Giants fan hosting this thing. So we'll just talk our teams for a second. Correa also is talking about going to back to Minnesota. Um, but again, there is zero team loyalty. And this guy is paying the price for not apologizing for what happened in 2017. He has two strikes against him. One, he's kind of MLB's villain. Two, and more importantly, he just signed a three-year deal with a one-year opt-out option, and he opted out. So what team is going to look at you and go, hey, you're going to be my next guy for 10 years? Not going to happen. Yep. I, I completely agree with you. And, you know, yeah, let's say Correa and Swanson per perspective. <clears throat> um, I don't want Correa uh, anywhere close to the San Francisco Giants organization. Not anywhere close. He is such a bad representative. In my opinion, he is such a bad representative of baseball. He, You are right. He has become – I look at him, and this is – I'm not going to – the comment I'm going to make is not – at the Dodgers. It's at the player. He is the Trevor Bauer of infield players. Oof. Oof. He is. That's a big comment to make. He is such a villain, and he deserves to be a villain. Because what he did, and not apologizing and taking responsibility for his actions after that World Series, he deserves to be called the villain. And you're right. What team is going to look at you and say, we're going to sign you to a mega million dollar multi-year contract and put you on a full no, and put you on a no trade clause, and expect you to be loyal to that team. None. There is not a single team that would expect it. The Yankees want to take that risk. They got a, they got billions of dollars. Steinbrenner can pay that contract all day. Feel free to add to your billion dollars across three players. Remember, right now the Yankees just for um, Cole. Stanton and Judge are paying one point one billion dollars in co- total contract value, <laughs> but they're not paying Bobby Bonilla every year. No, geez. I yeah, but at the same time, if <laughs> think about it, I would rather pay Bobby Bonilla a million dollars a year than pay Giancarlo Stanton twenty million dollars, who either strikes out or hits a home run, and and is and it looks like a. a you know, a falling tree when he plays in the field. I mean, the guy looks like a... Um, Sorry, Giancarlo, if you hear this, um, we'll get you Sam's address so you can toilet paper his house. That's okay. fine. Don't Feel worry. free to come to my house. I will say it to your face. <laughs> um, I look at Swanson and I look at him as a gamer. As a Giant fan, he is the guy I want. He is not only a proven shortstop, he's young, he has got he's got that energy. He brings that excitement to the game. He is he's the type of player you want. I look at him and I can compare I would compare Swanson to a Trey Turner. Honestly. I would compare their playing styles to be very similar. And I think Swanson is gonna be better, especially because Swanson is three years younger. Mm-hmm. He's three yeah. years younger. So I think, you know, I, I agree with you. I think Swanson's going to look at Swanson's going to play that market and he's just going to sit back with his agent and say, let's just see how this plays out. Let's just see what happens. And Correa is going to get signed and Swanson's going to swoop in, look at what teams have got the most money to spend and say, bring it here, bring it. He's got the money. He's got the market for it. Um, Rendon, he is only 30. While I think seven years, maybe a tad long. I do think four years is too short and the reason why is because in the last three in the last two to three years Rendon has really started to come into his prime and I think he's looking for something where he can solidify that prime for a good amount of time I would say five to six years if it's five years with a sixth year option and if it's six years with a seventh year option that's where I would go um I think the biggest thing on here to look at right now personally is what's going to happen with Brian Reynolds who is he going to be traded to someplace he'll go someplace um yeah he's not going to stay in uh Pittsburgh but there's a lot of teams 
I would say out of the 30 teams, excluding the Pirates, right, so the 29 teams, I would say he's a good fit for probably 18 to 20 of those 29. And he could he could do a lot of good. I could honestly see Seattle putting in some bids for Brian Reynolds. That's who I could see. And another guy who we haven't talked to who is a free agent who we don't think about, but really be started to play well over the last couple of years, Adam Rendon. I mean, Adam Duvall. Adam Duvall over the last couple of years has really started to come to his own. He's still a strong hitter. He still plays the field very well. I'd be very curious to see what's going to happen with him over the next couple of weeks. Um, So just these are the current free agents still out there, guys. These are some of the biggest names right now. Who on this list, Bill, real quick, give me in a minute or two, who surprises you is still on, who off of this list surprised you is still there? None of them. None of them surprised me. Um, Again, Carlos Correa. MLB's enemy. Dansby Swanson's playing the art of the deal, right? Um, Brandon Belt is not going to demand what his market value is. Uh, none of these names on here still surprise me. Will Myers is a great player. Uh, Noah Syndergaard, you know, if, if he's Thor, he's amazing. If he's Noah, yeah. So, none of them. Agre- no, and and I I I see where you're I I understand where your feelings are. I think, um, I think JD is a little surprising to still be on here. He has been he especially just as a DH. You know, you can bring him in as a DH. You could, you know, he's. I feel like he's uh he's not a a risk for signing. Um, I feel like his market value is a little bit high, especially with his age. I would probably say he'd be somewhere in the realm of maybe like an $11 million average contract value just due to that. Um, and the fact that he doesn't play the field anymore. Um, I agree with you that if Syndergaard is Thor, he is he is unstoppable. Um, I think what's going to be Syndergaard's biggest thing is he needs to go somewhere that is a pitcher park. He needs a pitcher's park. Um whether that's re-signing in Philly, whether that's say maybe going to Baltimore, um, I could see him in I could see him in the Orioles. Um, San, I mean, I'd even say San Francisco because we're still looking for a starting pitcher. Um, but you know, I think I do. I am a little surprised that at least Rendon is still on this list. I actually thought he would have been signed by the end of this week. Um, I will say. I think the three top guys on this list, Rendon, Correa, and Swanson, will be signed before Christmas. I don't think there's a question they, they in my mind signed. that these, these three They'll guys will be signed. be signed before the end of the year, for sure. Because yeah. they need to figure um, out where they're, they're going to be playing. They need to start working with their coaches, hitting coaches, pitching coaches. Before the end of the year, all these guys will be gone. A hundred percent. So, you know, as Bill and I said, we could talk about this all day, but we only got about 30 minutes to have this conversation on a Saturday morning. So we're going to, we're going to keep it condensed, but there is a jam packed list of podcasts coming out this week. One in particular, I'm really excited about is dropping <laughs> on Monday. I might be a little bit selfish, but the one in capital letters, opinion. everybody. The one in all caps that the that was supposed to have exclamation points all the way across the screen, but for some reason they just got deleted huh. beforehand. Bill, give me a quick rundown on what you're on this amazing schedule you got put in there. So you, you and I did a, a podcast where we let you play GM for the day, which is awesome. Um, that is dropping on Monday. On Tuesday, Jamie uh, and I are uh, she wants to talk about the Turner deal. And so that's going to drop on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have a Yankees fan coming on who is dropping. Um, Ricky and Kevin are – the Yankees fan is new to the podcast. Ricky and Kevin on Thursday, they're new to the podcast. Kathy is an Angels fan, and she's going to play GM for the day. Now, um, if you haven't uh, seen yet, we I started doing a bunch of lives with people. Okay, because Mikey Bleeds Blue and I do a bunch of lives together. Um, and they're always Dodgers based. So we're gonna actually branch out and cover all 30 bases on uh Instagram Live. 
So on Monday night um, at 7 wait, p.m. Wait, 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 we're bringing in all 30 teams into the IG Lives? Oh, IG Lives, man. Yeah. <laughs> so Jackie, who you've seen on the podcast, or you've heard on the podcast, you've read some of her articles, she's got two friends, and they're going to talk about the Astros. That's going to be at 7 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll probably be on for about an hour. We'll see how that all rolls. Um, please, everybody, when you're on the lives, all I ask you to do, all I ask you is to be kind in your comments. Um, because sometimes people get a little, little crazy. Everyone, just remember, we are always respectful to you and your fan bases and your teams. We ask that you be respectful for us. Always remember that we are providing our opinions and our knowledge on what we know from these teams. And realize that while we may not be perfect, it's our opinions. And as we respect yours, we ask you respect us. Um, Absolutely. So excited to see this schedule. Excited to listen to these podcasts, watch these IG lives. And who knows, you might see a podcast possibly coming up soon where Bill and I flip the script and I make Bill the GM for a live one of these days because oh, we boy. all want to hear Bill's perspective from a Dodger fan. So uh, just that to kind of wrap it up. That podcast gets listened to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, let's, so, talk real, let's talk real quick about the site and everything. So Sam, obviously, Sam and I drop this every Saturday in the locker room. You've got to have locker room access to get it. Obviously, you're listening to it, so you do have locker room access. Um, in addition to that, you're going to see an article, at least one article a week dropped by me, and at least one article by a top fan that will drop in the locker room access. Um, we have a number of unique articles that are being written right now um, that I think are, are phenomenal. So if you have a desire to write something, because or you want to go on a live or you want to do a podcast reach out to us let us know um again at some point i'm going to get sam on with the giants and he's going to bring on two giant buddies and we're going to talk giants baseball on a live and so this will be a great time but if you want to participate please let us know remember that we still have discount codes through december to get yourself locker room access please understand this most sports places that, and I'm not going to mention which ones, um, but most sports places charge between nine and fifteen dollars a month. Okay, we charge thirty six dollars a year for the locker room access, so three bucks a month. So you want to be fan involved? Great, there it is. So Sam, this has been a good good episode. We appreciate uh, appreciate you running it. This is fantastic. Hey, you know, it's always great jumping on on a Saturday morning, talking some of America's pastime with a close friend, a dear rival. But we put the rivalry aside and we talk we talk baseball from a traditionalist perspective. It, 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 it brightens my day. Um, and everyone, just to give you a quick heads up, next week will be our early Christmas episode to everyone. Unfortunately, it will also be our last episode for the year. So we hope you all enjoy. We hope you all join us next week. Um, give, bring us your comments. Bring us your feedback. Bring us your questions. Um, we definitely want to hear them. We definitely want to see them. And to close this out, I'll see you on the field. See you later.